Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. I am coming to you from Punta Gorda at a place called Iguana Land. Iguana Land, it's going to be opening here in April. And what we're doing is we're coming in and we're creating a really cool entrance here. We're doing a palmless waterfall to greet all the visitors that are coming right here to Iguana Land. And we're doing a huge ecosystem pond. This ecosystem pond is going to kind of mimic the Florida Everglades. I always try to model things after natural ecosystems and the Florida Everglades, man, that's an incredible system. It starts way up in that northern central area of Florida and then it works its way south over many many days and it just kind of filters its way through all the sawgrass and the palmettos and all of that vegetation going all the way out to the Gulf of Mexico. So what we're doing here is we're going to create a miniature version of that. We're going to create an upflow biological filter which is a constructed wetland filter. All that water is going to meander and slowly move its way through this entire ecosystem pond towards our intake bay. All right so stay tuned on this one. It's going to be a great project. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't laid out the pond yet. Uh, what we're doing is this was an existing drainage area. We are going to be building this section. We're just trying to create a level space that we could work with. We're going to have our wetland filter kind of coming right up in this section. We're going to build up up against these block walls. This is going to create our waterfall coming down. Then we're going to start our pond system out in here and it's going to kind of meander its way through this little swale area. He's going to have some tortoise enclosures over on this side. So these will be all be tortoise enclosures and then this section in the middle is going to be an area where visitors can come hang out there's going to be gazebos pergolas patios garden spaces etc so this is going to kind of be a central gathering area then what we want to do is we want to drum in over towards the main pond we're going to have that cantilever deck kind of going out over the edge of the pond where visitors could sit on the bench view the waterfall and look at all the beautiful fish that are going to be inside the ecosystem pond all right it's a foggy start for today a lot of humidity in the air we are ready for our uh, stone deliveries are coming our biggest challenge today is going to be getting the stone over to the pond area so we have to work our way through these uh, enclosures over here he said he's got about a 14 foot span in between these enclosures but we're gonna have to navigate a truck through that and then make a hard turn so that is gonna be our challenge if we can't make that happen we're gonna have to stage all the stone out here and then shuffle it all in but that will add a lot of time obviously to the installation we're also getting our aqua blocks and everything ready up here by the front this is the location for our palmless waterfall which is going to greet all the visitors coming in through the main entrance all right first rock delivery oh. We got our uh, stone delivery. I want to really kind of highlight some of the unique components of this native stone here. I mean, just check this out. I mean, look at all the different seashells and all that stuff. So this is crushed coral, sand, calcium carbonate. All that stuff has become compressed over time and it just makes rocks. So this was all deposited inland. So this is actually coming from central Florida and then it becomes mined from that area. But just look at all this stuff. I mean, it's just loaded with all types of unique shells. It's a little bit jagged, so it is a mined or quarried stone. So they crush it when they uh, blast it and they pull it out of the ground. They actually crush it into these uh, the different sized pieces, so they actually make the stone. So this is actually coming out of just a massive bed of material. It's a sedimentary stone, so that means it's just been laid down in dis different layers and sediments, and then it becomes compressed over time. Yeah, check out this big shell that's just sitting here. So that was actually inside of one of these rocks. It's an old seabed. And then they mine it and crush it and make it into everything from small aggregate into these larger chunks that they use for riprap. They use them along shorelines uh, to control wave action and erosion. They use it for roadbeds, etc. We're using it obviously for our pond and waterfall construction. We have 
have the waterfall already up in the front and now we're starting to work on the ecosystem pond. This is the part I've been looking forward to because this is a really, really cool project. This is going to mimic the Everglades. What I mean by that is if you're familiar with Florida, the hydrology as well as the geology of the area, it's very unique. There's this massive marshy kind of river system. So what we want to do here is do a miniature version of that because Florida here, obviously people are coming here to enjoy the weather as well as all the different uh, reptiles that Ty has brought in from around the world. So we're trying to recreate a really cool environment. So this ecosystem pond, Nick is kind of getting stuff ready. Let's go take a look to see what he's doing over here. This was an existing drainage area. This has been in for many, many years. This was an old orchard. So what we're doing is we're just trying to amend this area. We're reshaping everything. We eliminated some of the retention in this first section. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to have some seating areas. So there's going to be gazebos, park benches, and things like that on the area where I'm standing right now. Then we're going to transition over to this ecosystem pond, which is going to kind of stretch in between. What we're trying to do is create a barrier as well as multiple layers to kind of disguise some of these other exhibits on the other side. The pump area is going to start over here. This is the far end of it. So this is where the pumps are going to be located. It's going to pump the water from here all the way up to our filter, as well as a series of jets and things like that, which will give us the necessary circulation, aeration, and water quality that we're looking for. All the soil that we're going to generate during our excavation, some of it will be thrown back in here. The rest of it will be repositioned up to our waterfall area. So again, we're going to build that elevation up. What I'm going to do while Nick is doing this, I'm going to go grab my sketch. I'm going to start painting everything out, and then I'm going to go over everything with our man Ty over here, just to make sure that everything is going to meet his vision for this area. continue to rough in the pond. Uh, now what we're doing is we're creating our ledges. Whenever we're doing ecosystem ponds, I'm always thinking about areas for plantings. I'm always thinking about viewing areas. This area here is the proposed uh, overhanging deck. It's going to kind of cantilever itself out eventually. I don't exactly know when that's going to be installed, but that's kind of the plan. And you can see in front of this deck area, we're going to go deep. So we want visitors to come in. We want them to be able to see the depth of the water as well as all the different fish that are going to congregate in those deeper zones, especially here in the Florida heat. Now this backside you can see it's going to step up in, in elevation that area is shallower and that's for some different varieties of aquatic plantings so we're trying to create appropriate levels for different types of aquatic plants to really create that ecosystem effect that we're going for all right groundwater continues to be an issue on the project it's kind of anticipated so what we're doing we have this uh, little trench dug along the bottom of the main pond as well as this area here and what we did was we laid down the uh, geotextile fabric inside the trench we have our perforated pipe and then we're going to come in with some of our crushed stone and then we're going to fill it in and then you can see what it looks like once we're done so we cut about a three foot strip and then what we do is we just take that fabric and wrap it back over the top then we'll go over the top of the entire excavation with a secondary geotextile we'll put our rubber liner in and then another geotextile on top of that for a bomb proof uh, installation so that's the finished one this one's under construction we got the trench put in geotextile you can see the drain pipe now we're just going to take that crushed stone fill in around around the pipe and then wrap it. noise on the job today. The guys are doing some of the concrete work. They're cutting over there and I can't stop them unfortunately. We just pulled in our rubber liner. Actually the guys helped us so we had about uh, eight guys total which is nice because it was an 800 pound liner so about 100 pounds a person which isn't too bad. So what we did was we put down that geotextile fabric on the bottom. Rubber liner this is going to hold the water in place. Then we're going to sandwich it. We're going to put another layer of the geotextile over the top of the liner. What that will do is it's going to increase the load bearing capacity.
capacity of the liner, so we're literally we're creating a sandwich. So we have fabrics on the top and the bottom. This is a non-woven polyethylene, really, really tough, durable material. Does not stretch. The rubber liner stretches, these two layers do not. So what it does is it kind of spreads the weight limit out over a bigger surface area. So that allows us to place big, giant boulders on top of these liners. Just on top of standard liner, with a little bit of preparation with these fabrics, I place boulders in excess of 25 tons. It can handle extreme heavy weights. The liner is guaranteed for 20 years. That's a 45 mil EPDM. EPDM stands for ethylene propylene diene monomer polymer. So this is a standard in the industry. It is used in all different types of applications where waterproofing is critical. So this material is really tough, it's durable, but the nice thing about it, what I like about it, is it conforms to our excavation. So whenever we're excavating, I don't want to just create a big giant pit. I want to have some shape to it. So we're mimicking natural ecosystems. So in a natural ecosystem, you don't just have a big channel. We're not the Army Corps of Engineers. What we're doing is we're sculpting, we're carving, we're thinking about the way the water is going to flow through everything. So we have lots of flow coming through here. It's going to deepen up a little bit. The water is going to slow down and then the water picks back up velocity as it goes over this little edge here, which is going to go into the intake bay, which is our pre-filter. So we're always thinking about that water flow, how it's going to work. These little backwater areas over here is going to be loaded up with aquatic vegetation. So I have some big giant boulders coming. We're going to set those as kind of a unique peninsula right over here. We're going to put some big boulders on that side. And then what we'll have in the back section is all the aquatic vegetation. So like I said, we're thinking biomimicry concepts, mimicking natural ecosystems. So our next step coming over the top of this with our second layer of the geotextile. We're getting ready to backfill our intake bay. So remember the intake bay is created out of the aqua blocks. This is creating a structural void space under this entire system. So there's gonna be a gravel layer on top of here. So underneath all that stuff is the actual infrastructure. Down here at the end, we have our pump fault. We've also put a layer of these flow cell drainage panels on top. This increases load bearing capacity, also allows for ease of maintenance. This is gonna be a good collecting point for debris. So once this is filled, we're gonna have about eight inches of water flowing inside of this area. So now what we need to do is we're going to backfill this space. Now we have two different options. One of the options is we could fill this space with stone. We could fill it with uh, river rock. But here in Florida, river rock is really expensive. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold the liner in and then we're going to backfill with some of this sand. The way this system operates is under compression. So what that means is you want to put a load all the way around it. We have support obviously on the bottom, nice level bottom. We're going to backfill the sides all the way around really tight and that puts it under load. So what that does is it makes it stronger. Our next step, fold this stuff in. We also have multiple layers of our fabric. We have one on top of the liner. We have our EPDM membrane. We have another layer of fabric on the bottom. Fold all that in, backfill it, we're ready to go. Backfilled, aqua blocks, everything's taken care of. This is our intake bay. This is all set, everything's locked in place. I feel good with that. We have our heavy duty fabric going across everything. We've also poured a little bit of concrete down here. That concrete is gonna be for a couple posts that we're gonna set in here for the cantilever deck that eventually is gonna be installed. So that's all set up for us. So now our next step here is going to be coming in with stone. So we're gonna start moving our rocks down inside. If you remember from the video that I did on how to spec out the desired amount of stone, I do that calculation. The most accurate way, obviously, to do it is to literally measure the entire perimeter. And then what you do is you find the appropriate size of stone, and then you could set those in place. good example of what I was talking about with setting those boulders. So we have our excavation coming down and then we come in with all these different layers of stone. Ideally we come up with you know just big ones but then we'll come in with a couple different layers just to set things back. What I want to point out is you can see how high these rocks are in relationship to this other edge and that's because we're going to be putting in gravel material in there so that acts as kind of an edge to hold everything in place. You don't want to get yourself into a situation where those rocks are lower because then you're always going to see that edge 
edge exposed. Um, because once this is filled with large koi, koi are unbelievable. They constantly are feeding on the bottom. So if you look at that morphology of that fish, it has a uh, ventrally located mouth. So that means that mouth is located right on the bottom. And they also have those barbels. Those are sensory structures that they could actually taste the floor, the riverbed or the lake or the stream, whatever it happens to be. So they're constantly searching for food, microorganisms, and they pick up chunks of gravel and they spin them around in their mouth and they actually eat all those little organisms that are living on top of that uh, gravel surface. They will move gravel. That's the whole point of the story here is they will actually take entire sections of, of gravel and move it out of the way. So you want to make sure that the gravel could actually stay in place and stays uh, where you want it. So we've got the one layer in place. Now we're going to come in here with some bigger boulders. This edge here is a little bit taller than this one. So we're going to come in with bigger boulders and or multiple rocks. Set a rock down on the bottom and then put another one back behind it. So I'm going to uh, pick out those next rocks, going to the stone yard to pick out some of those big boulders. And that's going to be our next step in this ecosystem pond. Just got back from the quarry. It was a really cool ride going out there, driving around the edge of Lake Okeechobee, seeing where the wetlands actually kind of flow through that entire area, as well as how they've actually had to change it to make it work for agriculture and for all the other development that's happened throughout South Florida. While I was at the quarry, I picked out the next set of stones. These are some beautiful large uh, cap rock, really, really cool stuff. Looking forward to getting that stuff and receiving that so we can finish off this project. We are finishing up all of the prep work here today, and then we're heading back to Chicago and then we have our CACs coming in. We have 50 plus contractors coming in from around the world. They're gonna assist us with uh, finishing off the project here at Iguanaland, so stay tuned from that. That project is gonna happen February 10th, 11th, and 12th.